Some of Brian's most important data comes from the capture of individual birds. Often this is simply a matter of knowing where the owls are going to be and when. Once the location of an active nest is known, the parents are usually not too hard to find. You use a capture net on an extendable pole, put that in front of the cavity and wait for her to fly into it. Simple enough, right? We're waiting for the female to come off her roost. See, she's been sleeping in this hole all day with the young. And it's typically about this time that she will come off the roost to feed and defecate. Usually her departure is prompted by a visit by the male, bringing the first or the first few prey deliveries of the night. The male has provided two prey deliveries, but she's holding fast. It's a waiting game. We'll see who wins here. Either the female will hold out longer than I can afford to in terms of possibly uh, impacting her or the male. Or in just a few minutes, I'll give it up and allow her to f come out on her own. We'll try a little bit longer here, see if we can get her. If the female holds out long enough, they'll let her be and go for the male instead. For the males, they'll be delivering prey all night long, so you got to be fast to see them coming in to the cavity the net over the hole and catch them. Once the flame crew has determined nest locations and territory boundaries, knowing who's who in the study site is important for understanding territorial behavior among the owls. Six, four, five, eight, seven. Brian has found that flamulated owls exhibit 74% fidelity on average, meaning that they remain faithful to a single territory or partner more than most migrant birds. Breaking that figure down, we find that males are far more faithful to their territories than females. This is because it is more important for a male to be familiar with his own territory, since he is the one defending it. Oh yeah, that was an aggressive call, wasn't it, dude? They kind of faint when you hold them in your hand. They're almost weightless, they're just 80 grams or so. It's a lot lighter than you'd think an owl, even that big, would be. That's a principle of science that the observer is always affecting the observed. We're not affecting these birds so much that they're at a disadvantage. Whatever stress we do put on these birds, I don't know if I like the term like a greater good, but it's something like that. Okay, honey. Let's turn him over. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, <laughs> hold him firmly with that hand. I want to keep this wing elevated. Okay. And pull it up right here. And I want you to pinch it about that hard. Okay. Okay. You're going to feel his wrist. Okay. Okay. Come down a little further. Feel that wrist? Right there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pinch it. Okay. Like that hard. Okay. See how that little dude's doing here. Oh. Dude, you're looking good. Okay, dude, we better let you go.
Here goes. Awesome. 